Welcome, 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 gentlemen. Back to this, the third video in the five video series on how to practice, how to prepare for a five day fasting challenge. And so we're getting ready in just a few days here to uh, engage as a group in this five day fasting challenge. First video was an introduction to the five day fasting challenge. Uh, video number two was about how to prepare yourself physically and mentally for this five day fasting challenge. Today we're going to go over the actual fasting template or when you feast and when you fast during these five days. I mentioned in a previous video that we're not going to just jump right into a five day fast, although you can. But this is the process to slowly build you up to the capacity for prolonged fasting. This is, this is sort of a get the ball rolling, get your feet wet, get a little experience, get off of the addiction to consumption, always stuffing our food, face with foods, uh, and also to build some discipline. So like I mentioned, the, fat, the benefit to fasting are myriad. And of course, we all are here for the, we love to see the physical benefit, right? You know, this is a strength training channel, strength camp. I'm Yo Elliott, strong man. So we, we, we like to live life on the periphery. I think it's amazing. You know, it's great to be strong, to be fit, to look good. But what this fasting template will also do is strengthen your character, strengthen your resolve, strengthen your soul, if you will. And that's why it's such an ancient, timeless practice for being the strongest version of yourself. That's why I love fasting. So why don't we jump right into it by having me explain what you guys are going to do over the course of the next five days. And I'll sort of interject some of my, uh, some of my other ideas that may support you. So we're going to begin on a Monday, right? So have your last ketogenic or high fat protein, low carb meal on Sunday. Uh, I typically have my last meal, which is usually a protein shake with uh, coconut milk. It's just what I love. About eight o'clock PM. So I'm going to kind of use that as an example, but you may stop eating on Sunday at 6 PM. It really doesn't matter, but be definitive. Choose an end point. Say Sunday night, you know, after you had a wonderful day on Sunday, watching football or going to church or whatever you do on your Sundays on the Sabbath, right? Uh, and then, say 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock, whatever it is, you cut off, eat no more food, you can drink water, right? And then it begins because on Monday, you're going to practice your very first nomad. Nomad means no meal a day, as opposed to OMAD, which many of you have heard of, which is one meal a day. This very first nomad will be monumental for you in your life, particularly if you're American, you live in a affluent country. Most people have not gone to bed their entire lives without skipping a meal, without having a meal. Uh, this is going to break a lot of fear in you. And that's why I begin with just this one nomad. And, I, and I, I want to pause for a moment and I want to point out the significance of the achievement of going to bed hungry. Now, mind you, there are millions of children all over the planet who go to bed hungry every fucking night. Your fat ass can handle one night. Just don't even think about the rest of it. Just think about this one opportunity you have to transcend that repetitive, addictive, consumptive behavior of constantly stuffing your face. I think it is the root of many of our evils. You know, they say that money is the root of, of all evil. Well, money is, uh, is a means by which we consume. And I think it's the consumption that is really the root of all of our evils. And I think that uh, food constantly eating does a number of things. Number one, it keeps us emotionally addicted to consumption because when you eat, you feel good. You feel satiated. It fills sort of an emotional hole that grew there 
when you were a child, when you were a baby and you were whining or you were crying or you were unsatisfied. And the first thing your mommy would do is she'd stuff a fucking bottle in your mouth and all of a sudden you're all good again, right? So any kind of, any kind of discomfort. We never give ourselves an opportunity to go through discomfort because since we were babies, we've been getting clogged, stuck shut with consumption, fucking eating. And you see it, you know, you see it with the babies and you see it with the, with the adults. Uh, three meals a day, you know, a lot of people, they wake up in the morning, they don't have their, they don't have their meal or their coffee, they don't have their meal or their coffee, they're hangry which is just another way of describing uh, being a bitch when you're hangry. When you're hangry, that's because you are experiencing the weakness of demons, of addiction, leaving your body, right? Keep that in mind. So uh, you get to face yourself. You get to face your demons. You get to face your weaknesses, your inner beta. Stop being a bitch. You don't get a meal. You don't eat. Mama's not coming to put her titty in your mouth. Get over it. Lunchtime's going to pass, you may start having little headaches. Ooh. Might start feeling low blood sugar. These things are legit. I understand they're there, but you can handle it. And so begins the path of soul regeneration, right? Because you gotta battle those, I quote unquote, demons. I call them demons. You gotta battle that, that inner dialogue that keeps you stuck in constantly needing and being dependent on. That shit. So you get to be a good big boy. But what you ought to know, because the ego loves to have validation. I agree. You no, know, I like this validation too. Is there in that first that first day, that first nomad? We're gonna stick with this for a little while. It's first 36. You're battling emotional demons, right? Because there's the there's the there's the habit, there's the addiction, and all addictions are emotional, of you know, walking to the refrigerator and, and getting something out to eat or going uh, to the restaurant and getting something to eat. You're, you're going to get fidgety because you're going to, you're, 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 your body's used to a pattern that's being broken. It's a pattern interrupt. So there's a lot of that that's going to be going on. A lot of it is, is mental. And that, uh, I know I'm a broken record here, but I, I really and truly believe that that's, a, that's just as important as what's happening physically. Now, what's happening physically? you ought to know, is that you are going through a detoxification process. At least that's part of it. Uh, if you did as I said, and you ate mostly ketogenic, high fat, high protein, moderate protein, uh, low carb, which is the key, the days before, you won't have that low blood sugar sort of wooziness that people get when their insulin is high, but then blood sugar has all been scavenge is all gone and then the body you know the insulin almost acts like a like it starts seeking shit for energy you know it's, a, it's an energy uptaker in the body and if the sugar is not there right because you're fasting right so it's like insulin is like the drug addict in you <gasps> i need i need and then the sugar is like the oh i get what i want well there ain't gonna be no fucking sugar keep your insulin low you won't have such a big problem but for a lot of people, you know, the consumption has just been chronic for so many years that even after a few days of eating ketogenic, you're going to go into this first nomad, insulin still may be kind of high. Uh, and so you're, you're, you're dealing with that. That's a part of the reason why you might feel kind of shitty. Uh, but then the other thing that happens is when you stop consuming you stop digesting. Digestion requires a lot of freaking energy from the body. It is energy intense. And so, you know, the, you're taking a lot of food, but you're, 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 you're using a lot of energy to burn that food up. When you stop consuming, stop taking in food, your vital resources, the energy in your body, if you will, can then be diverted to other tasks. And right at the top of that task list, Right after trying to get the food out of your body, your body's going to put prioritize that a lot of times, most of the times, because there's food in here. It's got, you got to deal with it, right? It's got to, you got to get it out, really. Ultimately, is to detoxify your body from all of the 
garbage from the consumption that you've been, you know, and even if you're eating a quote unquote normal diet, your body then begins uh, a detoxification process that will make you start feeling kind of shitty. Now, um, there are a lot of people that they question whether this detox is really happening or not. Uh, you can do your own research and you can decide whether or not uh, it makes perfect sense to me. It just, to me, it, it rings is logical. It makes sense. Uh, we do consume constantly. And we do consume a lot of things that our body wants to get rid of. That's why we've got so many liver problems and shit of that nature. Uh, and when you stop eating, it makes sense that, let me put it this way. Here's a really good example I heard. If you want to fix a road, right? There's a road, there's a road out in front of my house. Looking at this fucking road and it's all in shambles. You want to fix that road. You want to bring that road back to life. You want to bring that road back to its strongest self, that pothole ridden, fucked up road, you got to stop traffic. It's the first thing you got to do. You can't have cars coming back and forth while you're trying to fix the potholes, right? Well, your body works the same way. When your body wants to go back to repairing, you know, get, and detoxification is just a word that sort of like precedes repairing. You got to get rid of the shit, right? If you're going to fix this road, you got to sweep off all of the, the broken pieces and get them out of the way, right? All these broken pieces of concrete, you got to get them out of the way. That way the repair can begin. Well, the same thing in your body. You can't keep eating food at traffic. Traffic, you got to stop the traffic. Your body can then, okay, whoo. All this medication that you had been taking, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides in the food, um, so on and so forth, pollutions, plastics, all that shit. Your body then is like, okay, whoo, let's get rid of some of this shit since there's no more traffic. We got to start cleaning up, right? And then a few days later, which we're not even going to talk about right now, then the repair process begins. That's what they call autophagy and stem cell, apparently. Fasting stimulates stem cell activity, production, shit like that. So you're going to be battling during this first 36 hours. That's why I'm spending some time on it. Those emotional demons of consumption and an addiction. And physiologically, you're going to be going through sort of a detox process. Um, I'm going to do a whole... Q&A series after this, but you know, there's so much more to be said with regard to detox because some people, some people, some people are toxic as fuck. And that, you know, and I'm not saying that to make light, but I mean, if you've been taking medication, you know, I have family members who've been taking medication for decades, that's synthetic, it's unnatural, it's stuff that the body will store in the body fat, it'll store in your tissue, some of it gets stored in the brain, and when you, st go, you start going into this fasting process, it could take a very long time for your body to get rid of a lot of the toxins. Uh, I used to have amalgam fillings. Uh, they're all white now, but if you guys remember some of my old videos, I'd be shouting because I talk like this. My tongue looks purple, I don't know why, because I think of the, the lighting where I'm at. But anyway, you would see, uh, you see all these, so the metal, the toxic heavy metals, those, get stored in the body too. And so there are, we are being bombarded with toxins from everywhere. And some people it's going to take longer than others. Some people are going to suffer a lot longer than others. And you know, this is all about being fucking tough. This is all about stop being a bitch, stop being a baby, man up, do what's right, what's good for your body and your soul. But at the same time, I'm going to make sort of a caveat. That if you get into this process and you, 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 you're detoxing hard and you feel horrible, the way to modulate that is by eating once again. Eating doesn't make you feel better, at least uh, physiologically. Eating does not make you feel good physiologically. Emotionally, yes. That's why we like sugar and candies and cakes and yummy things like that. Treats. It's emotional that makes you feel good. When you eat during a fasting process and, you, and you're starting to feel better because you eat, it's merely because you're stopping the detox process. So you're detoxing, you're purging, you're feeling like shit, your breath is getting bad. These are some of the symptoms. Your breath might start getting bad. Uh, and then uh, you eat, you take in some food, and then the detox process stops. So like the guy's fixing the road, 
right? They were fixing the road and it was kind of painful. They stopped fixing the road. So you, you're just basically stopping the detox process. Understand that. I learned this from Arnold Eric. That good nourishing food is not what makes you feel good. What feels good is having a clean, healthy, vibrant, vital body that's pure. That's what's nice. That's what feels good. That's our natural state. That's coming home to ourselves. Uh, the food just stops you from getting there. So just, it's just, just know. That's all. Just know. You just need to know. So, uh, you're going to do this no, no man on Monday and then oh man on Tuesday, which means you're going to have one meal on Tuesday. So you're, you know, it's not even that bad. And the reason why, because this is like a taste, you know, this is just to get you going. Nomad, well, you went to bed, congratulations, you know, clap for you. But then you get to, you get to break, you know, you get to break the fast, you get to feed the addiction just a little bit with a OMAD day on Tuesday. And so with that, I say, you know, two to four, two to four hour eating window. Uh, you, could, you could do a legit OMAD, one meal, um, which is okay, which is great, which is amazing if you can do that. Uh, if you're the type that, you know, you want to get those calories in, that's fine. Especially, you know, you haven't eaten for, t for almost two days and, uh, you know, you think you're going to lose your gains. Well, then give yourself, you know, two to four hour eating window. So say, for example, uh, oftentimes I'll break fast at six and then eat to eight. So, you know, you went the whole overnight and you went most of the day on Tuesday. Wait till you get to the evening time and, uh, and then you break fast for two to four hours. And then when you stop, you stop, just like the Sunday before. When it's time to stop, you stop. And then you gear up to do the big boy dance all over again. And that means no mad on Wednesday, no mad on Thursday, oh mad on Friday evening. Cause I know everybody loves Friday. Thank God it's Friday, right? Where well, you're gonna go to TGI Fridays and have some fried pickles and IPA beer, something like that. I would say keep it, keep it clean. But then, so there's your 70 hours. And then, so what we've got here is five days, five days. Write it down or look, I'm gonna have a report ready for you guys pretty soon here. But right now, that's basically it. You, it, I can't stress enough. It's about breaking addiction, breaking the mental beta, the inner bitch, getting tough, and then pushing yourself a little bit. Through, and then treating yourself on Friday, right? And once again, this is all a process to help prepare you for prolonged fasting. I'm gonna talk in another video a little bit more about uh, the non-caloric beverages only. You know, this is a water fast. I didn't specify that, but it is a water fast. Uh, in subsequent videos and maybe challenges, we'll, we'll throw some dry fasting in there. But for right now, I think it's important for us just to get the ball rolling on this. And, uh, and with that, you'll only be drinking non-caloric beverages. So that's water, black coffee, um, bubbly water, gas water. That's what the Europeans call it, like Perrier, shit like that. And then, of course, I'll mention in the supplement video, which is coming up, the salts that you want to put in your water. I mentioned steak juice the other day. Uh, you want to put some salts in your water to help support you, especially if you're going to be training. And that's what that next video that's coming up right after this one's going to be all about. What do you do about your gains while you're fasting? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to offer you guys a few uh, training principles for fasting. And then I'll talk a little bit about what I'll be doing as I prepare for the Strength Camp Challenge. Keep growing stronger. Done.